So today we are going to discuss uh, one of the important topic of geomorphology that is uh, related to the evolution of the landforms. So here we are having two approaches or school of thought. Uh, this is also uh, described as theories of landscape development. So these two school of thought are related to two important geographers. One is William Morris Davis and second is Walter Penck. So Davis led the foundation of this theory and after critical evaluation of the Davisian model, the second model was given that is known as Penckian model of landscape development. So these two models are also known as the time dependent and time independent approach. So in this theories, we examine how the two forces that is endogenetic and exogenetic forces contribute to the evolution of the landform. So when the landform is evolving, when the structure of the landform is evolving, how is the role of endogenetic and exogenetic forces in the evolution of the landform? So the first approach is uh, Davisian model of landscape development. So Davis, he based his theory on the concept of static equilibrium where he separated the operation of the endogenetic force and exogenetic forces. So in Davisian model, we find that endogenetic force and exogenetic forces, they do not operate simultaneously. He has given importance to the exogenetic force and what about the role of endogenetic forces? Endogenetic force operate for a very short duration. So according to Davis, uh, he said that the initial upliftment of the landform will be by operation of the endogenetic force and this endogenetic force is operating for a very short duration. This will be considered as the preparatory stage of the landform. So how is a landform getting uplifted? How the landform is reaching its absolute relief? Absolute re relief in the sense that how the landform is reaching its maximum height. This will be by the operation of the endogenetic force. While remaining part of evolution of the landform is by exogenetic forces. Now what is exogenetic force? The tendency of the exogenetic force is to degrade the landform. The tendency of the exogenetic force is to reduce the relief and bring this landform more closer and closer to the base level or sea level. So here, if you see the fundamental principle on which the division model is based, so first thing we identify here is a trio. So this is one of the basic principle given by Davis. He said that landform is a function of structure, process and time. So what is meaning of a structure? Structure means it is a geological, geological makeup of of the landform. Geological makeup in the sense that it is a composition of landform. What type of rock the landform is composed of? Second is process. Process here means it is a geomorphic, geomorphic process. Geomorphic processes involve exogenetic exogenetic process because here again he is considering that the endogenetic forces has operated for a short duration after that it has ceased to operate means there is no continuity in operation of the endogenetic force so uh, he is giving more importance to the exogenetic forces in this case and time time is the duration of the process. How long this process is operating? So on a geological time scale, what is the duration? Duration of the exogenetic process or what is the duration of the weathering and erosion or denudational process? Now there are certain principles uh, on the basis of which we study the Davisian model. So first I have explained here about the static equilibrium. So what is static equilibrium? It is the separation of endogenetic and exogenetic force. Second, 
principle is cyclicity this approach is cyclic cyclic in the sense that uh, we can see the evolution of the land form in in a continuous manner like there is formation of the landform by endogenetic force a landform is created by endogenetic force it is brought down by exogenetic again there is a second cycle again uplifted by uplifted by the endogenetic forces so we can see there is a continuity of these process one after the other endo causes upliftment exo brings the landform down again there is upliftment again it is moving down in this way the landform can be monocyclic means it has experienced one cycle or it can be polycyclic landform now the second important principle in davis is the landform evolution is time dependent time dependent means we can describe the evolution of the landform in certain stages bounded by time so there are there is a phase or there is a stage of development of the landform so he took the reference of organic life so where the landform can be described as evolving in three stages that is youth mature and old and finally the landform after the old stage the end of the old stage will be where the landform is brought down to a base level it is converted into a flat surface this will be referred as erosion surface or he named it as a penny plane then third this uh, model is based on principle of uniformity or this is also known as uniformitarianism now what is meaning of uniformitarianism uniformity of the physical process so according to davis whatever has operated in the past the same is operating today and will be operating in future so this is the principle of uniformitarianism by which we will be able to connect from present to the past so davis described this as the present is present is the key to the past present is the key to the past this we are able to conclude based on the principle of uniformity of the physical processes that are operating on the surface of the earth and last one as i told you it is a sequential development of the landform sequential development means how the landform is evolving it is evolving in stages one after the other so the first stage is the stage of uplift so we will be discussing this in detail here i am just giving you a overview of the model so a sequential development involves first is the phase of rapid uplift where the landform reaches its absolute relief after that there is youthful stage then mature stage and then it is old stage and the end product is the low lying feature referred as penny plane so these are the four important principles that can be considered when we study the landform evolution in davisian model so this constitute the framework of framework of davisian theory of landscape development so this is the overview now we can study in depth about Uh, how the landform actually evolves there will be a graphical representation of the evolution of the landform so that we will discuss in our class